Hello and welcome to OLT 321, lecture four on the theme of fatherhood in Old Goryeo. My name is Warren Reed. Welcome. Let's try and keep it back to world record speed on these main point hitting video clips. Okay, so we're going to talk about the centrality of Old Goryeo. Old Goryeo as a product of the French Revolution, psychological aspects of Old Goryeo's tragedy, symbolic aspects of Old Goryeo's fatherhood, and the symbolic fatherhood of Routrin. Okay, it's a lot of things. Maybe it won't be so fast, but, you know, let me try. Here we go. The centrality of Old Goriot. The, no the novel could have been called The Boarding House, or Madame Vauquer's, or even the story of Eugène de Rastignac, but it's called Old Goriot. Why is that? But the, story, but the story shows different levels of French society, rich and poor, and also the social climbing and social failing. Old Goriot is the linchpin. Resting next curiosity about Old Goriot leads him to find out more about him, leads him to meet the daughters, and through the daughters he has another, another introduction into the society he's trying to join. Also, he meets Vautrin and learns all the lessons about the hidden side of life in Paris, all through Goriot, his curiosity about Goriot. His money, his money also helps his daughters lead a life that, that he doesn't lead. Um, he wants to make them comfortable and everything as a, as a father does. And so, as such, we see that he really is the central figure around which the whole story revolves. Old Goriot as a product of the French Revolution. Goriot was a businessman dealing in grains. With the revolution, democracy, he was able to do so more than before and becomes rich. But eventually the revolution was replaced by the monarchy just before the time of this novel, the story of the novel. A king again, and Goriot's fortunes fall. In this way, Balzac is demonstrating the way, the way history can affect the life of an individual in particular ways. So Goriot's fate was tied to the revolution. It rose and it fell. This is what is meant by he's a product of the revolution. The psychological aspects of Goriot's tragedy. Goriot is shown as being an everyday kind of guy He's not a big intellectual, and in fact, in business, he's more lucky than smart. But his redeeming quality is that he has a great love, passion for his wife. She, you know, he wants to take care of her and protect her and everything like that. Uh, and when she dies, he has all this leftover love that he puts on his daughters. And maybe it seems a little bit weird, but he sacrifices himself for them to make sure they can live a life and find good marriages and, and that sort of thing. Mir you know, in those days, the titles of aristocracy and, and, and position were, were passed on through, through the men. So if a family wanted to raise up, they had to marry their daughter to a rich person. And often the rich people had debts, so you had to have a dowry, a lot of money to go with your daughter into the new family. Like the, the husband price, you could say. It's kind of funny. He's also described as a Christ-like father. Uh, this isn't intended to be blasphemy, blasphemy, but just to show the kind of sacrifice he makes for his daughters. In fact, he dies at the end. He dies for his daughters. As a comparison, we have the character Victorine, who also lives in the boarding house, who is far from her father. Her father's a rich banker, but he's mean and he doesn't care about her. So we see a comparison with the father of Gorio, and we, we kind of think he's not so strange after all. He's actually kind of a caring old guy. The symbolic aspects of Goriot's fatherhood. Old Goriot is shown as a father symbolically and actually in a number of ways. First of all, he's the father of Anastasie and Delphine. Second, he's shown as having helped create the French Revolution through his business. He's also the only father in the boarding house and with his, through his daughters he links He's a link between rich and poor. He's also shown as the emotional father of Rastignac. He's the emotional side of, of Rastignac, Rastignac's influences in the story. Now we're coming to the symbolic fatherhood of Vautrin. We're really speeding along, you know. You guys can thank me later. 
Vautrin is also a social climber and a former convict who seeks to use his wits to get ahead and to get the better of French society. Symbolically, he's the intellectual father of Rastignac. He shows him the realities of life in Paris and also how you can either go along with it or declare war on that society and its realities. You can, you can fight it, you can go along like sheep, or you can fight it, you can stand up. You can be, as Vautrin, a kind of Napoleonic figure. Rastignac has been trying to play the social game according to its own rules, but at the end of the novel, he declares war on society. We can imagine, we can imagine, we can imagine he does so using the heart side from Goriot and the wits of, that Vautrin taught him. This brings us to the end of lecture four in record time, although you don't know how many mistakes I've made, you'll never know. So we talked about the centrality of old Goriot. We talked about old Goriot as a product of the French Revolution. We talked about the psychological aspects of old Goriot's tragedy, the symbolic aspects of old Goriot's fatherhood, and the symbolic fatherhood of Vautrin. And if you have trouble, you can email me. You know, in the old days, distance learning meant you had to write a letter, wait for me to write a letter back to get your answer. Now you can email, it's magic. Don't be afraid of the internet, use it, it's your friend, of course. If you're on the Moodle and you're watching this video, you already know a little bit. So, hooray for you. Just continue, I wish you best of luck, and stay tuned for lecture five. We're going to Gustave Flaubert and Madame Bovary. Mm -hmm.